So I won the Duelist Nexus sneak peek event and I was playing Dino Morphia. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the deck list and exactly what kind of cards I played, how I played them, why I played them, and how I ended up winning this entire sneak peek event. A lot in the mirror. You guys see it right there. First place, baby. What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy Spanko. And today I'm excited because I'm going to be showing you guys my deck profile that I came first place with at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist Nexus sneak peek. Now, Dino Morphia is a pick that I thought was going to be really cool going into this format and guess what I think I was right because this deck overperformed it was so so powerful and there's a couple card choices I made in the deck that absolutely were game changers now if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel we do deck profiles combo videos dual replays you guys also are going to get a short five days a week so you guys get a little bit of everything so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that now I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long because I know you guys are here for the deck profile I'm excited to show it to you guys so let's get right into it so to get things started, we are playing with three Dino Morphia Theresia. Theresia, of course, is the most important normal sum of your deck. So that's why, of course, we're playing three as well as two of the Diplos. Now, you don't want to play three because he's just a name that you just want to use to fusion summon with. And you guys are going to see we're not playing Miscellaneousaurus. We're not playing any other Dino cards. And the reason for that is because you really don't need them. Like if you go Misk, like people will argue, oh, Misk is really good because it will protect your Theresia from getting impermed. But to be honest with you, if your opponent is using imperm on Theresia, they're going to be losing the game anyways, because you're going to see see one of your fusion traps no matter what and then they won't have the imperm for the rextrum right and now you can also argue oh but mist can be used to protect the rextrum but you're gonna have so many other power cards that it doesn't really matter where mist kind of is just a brick for you it doesn't really do much for you you also can't really use it as a fusion material for anything so it's not really another great name so these are the only dinomorphia or dino i guess names that you need to be playing then for the other dinomorphia cards we are playing three frenzy three domain three intact of course and this is the best card in the deck like this card is mvp one alert and one sonic so these are the Dynamorphia cards that we're playing and i'll explain it these are all the most important ones that you need to be playing i think brute is not a good card at all you definitely don't need brute anymore but in this deck specifically intact i think is the most important thing being able to flip frenzy or flip domain and then never have to worry about ash because intact is a thing is insane also the reason you're playing all these especially like three intact and whatnot is because there's another card in the deck that i'm going to show you guys in just a second here where all of these cards first of all they synergize insane with ferret flames over here this card is like one of the best traps in the entire game when you resolve this you're winning going first going second this card is absolutely insane and so this synergizes of course with all of these but on top of that there's one more card that i want to be talking about and it'll all make sense when it's put together and that card is wannabe now wannabe is absolutely nuts i do not understand why more people are not on this card this card is absolutely insane so you ever go on your opponent's end phase activate wannabe and then set an intact or set a frenzy like it's absolutely insane this is always going to get you to what you need which is crazy and it makes it so that even when you're going second like like this card is so nuts when you are going second because again on your opponent's end phase you activate wannabe from hand if they don't have a negate for this or let's say your opponent puts up a negate let's say they put up a baron right or at the uh, event actually someone put up a theory on regulus on me and when they go regulus and i went wannabe they were thinking like okay do i regulus negate this or do i let it resolve and they had to regulus negate this and essentially that kind of broke his board because i got rid of one of the main negates that he had on board and i was able to now play through it right because they had to negate the wannabe now if wannabe does resolve you can set cards like fair flames you can set cards like frenzy or domain or intact which is insane because if you're setting an intact then you know no matter what if you go normal summon theresia and your opponent activates like a monster effect you have intact to negate it because this was set on your opponent's end phase so as soon as it becomes your turn again this is live so it's a turn zero trap which is absolutely insane i think wannabe is one of the best things that you guys can be playing and then for the other dino morphia honorable trap we're playing three judgment now a lot of people don't like playing judgment in the main deck because yes it's true judgment does suck going second essentially you want to be playing traps that are really really good going first and going second because what do you do when you go second however with wannabe that doesn't matter guys when i tell you i think it happened twice where i want to be into judgment on my opponent's turn when i was forced to go second and then i literally have a judgment set so no matter what i wanted to do in terms of my plays i knew it was always going to resolve because i had the judgment one time i had the intact so same thing i knew it was going to resolve because i had the intact that's how insane wannabe is like this card is absolutely nuts it's one of the most important cards and one of the best cards in the deck now this also gives you access to some really cool cards in the extra deck that i actually wasn't playing because i didn't have access to them and i'll talk about that when we get into the extra deck but essentially wannabe is just an insane card and this is the most crazy lineup of traps that you guys can be playing 
Now I'm going to get into the hand traps as well as uh, some board breakers. So we're playing three Ash, three Droll, which I think Droll is one of the best hand traps in the format. So we're playing three Droll and we're playing three Imperm. This is a hand trap, which is really nice, but it's also a board breaker. And then lastly, we're playing three Fenrir. Now Imperm is really cool, obviously, because it's a trap. So it's really good. It can also be set off wannabe, which is really nice. But the thing is with this deck is, although yes, you're playing a lot of power traps and the trap cards are so good, you also don't want to lose like really heavily to cards like Lightning Storm or Evenly Matched and whatnot. So the best way to play around those kind of cards is playing like these hand traps especially with droll being so good in today's format but imperm is another board breaker for you which is really good because one of its biggest weaknesses is just your opponent setting up too much of a board where you can't break through it but what imperm and fenrir let you do is they let you so that even if your opponent does set up a board these let you break the board same thing with wannabe right like i said like wannabe helped me break a board at that event which was insane but then these cards also over here droll and ash make it so that it's really tough for your opponent to even make a board so i think these 12 cards over here are so important to be playing i think fenrir was one of the most mvp cards in the game like this card is absolutely nuts in this deck one of the things this deck also struggles with is even though you're able to put up a rex drum and even though you're able to put up cards that essentially make it so that your opponent can't play you have to be able to win the game and one of the hardest things this deck kind of has to try to go over is even though you're setting up a rex drum sometimes it's not enough attack to just go for game every time right so fenrir does help you with that it puts a lot more damage on the board it's also a lot more threatening when you're going first you can start off by special summoning your fenrir and this is actually a disruption for you and then also going second you're threatening this because if you're special summoning this and then you want to go battle phase you can bait something out or if you don't want to go battle phase now you can normal summon your theresia and if they have like a monster negate somewhere if they have an ash well now it makes it so that this is a lot more scary because if they ash me now i'm breaking the board with the fenrir as well right so all these cards i think are really really important in this deck i, I wouldn't change this at all i think these were perfect and then lastly, to round off the deck, we're playing three Prosp and one Called by the Grave. So it's 40 cards on the dot. We're not playing Fossil Dig. You really don't want to lose to a card like Droll and Lock. Droll and Lock is going to be one of the best hand traps in today's format with Duelist Nexus coming out. And there's really no point to lose to Droll if you don't have to lose to Droll, right? So Prosperity is the best thing you can play because if you activate Prosperity and they Droll you, it doesn't matter because your Theresia is setting cards. Your Wannabe is also setting cards. So there's nothing where you're actually searching. So you don't actually lose to Droll at all. Where you lose to Droll is if you activate Fossil Dig and your opponent then, you know, has you with a draw and then you have a dead prosperity in your hand you don't want that to ever happen so three pros one call by the grave 40 cards on the dot very very consistent so moving on to the extra deck now, this is where I would make the most changes. I'm going to tell you guys what I wouldn't change. So first things first, three Rex Drum, three Catrogena, as well as two Stealth Bridgia. These are the most important ones that you need to be playing. You're playing two Stealth Bridgia just for a Frenzy. You're literally just using this for Frenzy. So that's pretty much it. You're never actually summoning this. It's not that good of a card to summon. But three Cat and three Rex Drum, these are very, very important. I don't think these are arguable. So, you know, I wouldn't change these at all. Then I was playing two Dolka and a Logia. And then I was also playing four Super Poly targets because I'm playing Super Poly in my side deck. So Garu. Starving Venom, Dragon Knight, Draco Equest, and Mud Dragon. So let me tell you guys what I would change. So first things first, these guys never going to change. So these are eight cards right here. I'm also going to 100% recommend playing one Dolka as well as one Logia because I think these cards are really good, good to go into when you can with your Theresia and your Diplo, especially with Alert. So I really like playing these ones. And then I do like definitely playing Super Poly. I think Super Poly was really good. It was really good for me at the event, but I would maybe cut down instead of playing four targets to two. Now Draco Equest, I never made once. I didn't make this a single time, but in theory it's good because you know dispatter is a card baron's a card and this card needs a dragon type synchro monster and a warrior type monster and a lot of people nowadays are ending on dispatter they might be ending on crimson dragon just any dragon synchros which are really really powerful in today's format abyss is also a really powerful one crystal wing is a really powerful one that abc might be ending on because revolution synchron is a thing so i think this card is really really important to be playing and for the other card maybe we play starving venom and garura or starving venom and mud dragon but you have definitely two cards that you guys can play around with here you don't actually have to play these five so the two cards that i was very heavily considering is one chaos angel now i don't own a chaos angel but why chaos angel is so good is because wannabe is a level two light so if you use wannabe as well as your rex drum to make a chaos angel this is really really powerful because it's using now a light and a dark which is insane because you have the chaos angel effect live right so this was a potential card like chaos angel was a card i heavily heavily considered and then another card that i really considered was baron because you're playing ash plus fenrir so ash plus fenrir is equal to a level 10 which is basically a baron which is really nice so baron chaos angel psychic and punisher because you can use ash plus a rex drum which is a level eight to make psychic and punisher and that can help you push for a game as well so definitely two cards over here that you guys can play around with whether it's chaos angel whether it's pep whether it's baron it doesn't really matter but there's two cards i definitely think you guys can play around with but these cards i definitely think you for sure you should be playing and then these two is kind of like whatever you think is best now if you guys have a chaos angel or baron i would say play that but yeah other than that i think these are pretty mandatory and then the last two is really up to preference.
So last day, I'm going to show you guys my side deck here, but I will say there's a few cards in my side deck that didn't really come up, and Gamma Seal was one of them. Now, in theory, Gamma Seal is really good because Purely is really good in this format, but I actually didn't see Purely all day. I didn't see Mana Diem as well. So Mana Diem, this is a really good card against them. Purely, this is a really good card against them, but I actually didn't see those at that event. So for that reason, I didn't really play this, but in theory, this is really good. I wouldn't change this up, even though just because I didn't sign it in specifically, I think in theory, this is still really good. Super Poly, 100%, I recommend playing. I would not not play these. These cards are too good in today's format so three super poly of course one harpies and two lightning storm now this is a card that i potentially would take out i never sided in lightning storm in once i considered playing this just for the labyrinth matchup and whatnot but i'm just thinking about it more and i'm, I'm just i wasn't even a huge fan of this honestly harpies for sure but the uh, lightning storm you can definitely cut for something else i think this card was just in no situation i was like wow i really want to side in lightning storms over something else right maybe even rivalry is a really good card that you guys can side in because rivalry is another good card that's good going first and second but speaking of rivalry i was actually playing three goals in match i sided this in pretty much every single go around this card is absolutely insane like going first going second it's so nuts because going first you're setting this up but going second first of all you can hit this off a wannabe going second which is insane but going second as well if you're just setting the goes in match with maybe three or four other traps and then you have a theresia on your side of the field on your opponent's standby phase you can flip the goes in match now your opponent has to have a negate for this because if they don't and they have multiple attributes on their field this is a board breaker for you so goes in match going first going second is absolutely insane and that's why i 100 recommend playing goes in match another card that i really liked was three anti-spell keep in mind we're not playing too many spell cards especially in the main deck i think we're only playing legit four spell cards in the entire main deck so if we're signing this in going first it's absolutely insane and i just thought it would be really good into so many different decks right it's good into mana diem it's good into purely it's good into just a lot of different things so that's why i thought anti-spell was really cool so the only thing that i would change from all of this i guess gamma seal is still in testing i wouldn't say gamma seal is something you definitely want to cut everything else here though i think is really really good maybe the two lightning storm maybe evenly match can come in here i, I don't know i don't I have anything off the top of my head but i think all of this was really good maybe just the lightning storm could be swapped so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that was my first place dinomorphia sneak peak deck profile i think this deck is absolutely insane i think it's one of those decks that's really not prepared for in today's metagame and when you're not prepared for it you can have a really hard time breaking these kind of boards or playing into the deck which is insane and now this deck obviously is really good going first because you're setting up your rex drum you're setting up your traps but going second surprisingly this deck is also really really powerful playing the hand traps and i'm telling you guys wannabe is one of the most powerful cards in this deck you have to be playing it it's so so good now i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu Gi Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel we do deck profiles common videos do replays all that good stuff and you guys are gonna get a short five days a week which means that you guys are always gonna have something to watch make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned to all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that spanko signing out peace